Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you a very quick and easy way to make snow covered trees. So I hope you enjoy this video. Sit back, relax, grab your paints, paint along with me, and let's get it started. So I'm going to begin with a piece of paper just taped down to a cardboard backing. Um, if you wanted to use a block, feel free to. I like to tape my paper down because I don't want it to curl. And I'm going to start with just a regular one inch wash brush to put water all over my paper. We're gonna start with a wet on wet wash. You can do this with any brush. It doesn't have to necessarily be a flat wash brush. You can do it with one of your round brushes. I just like to cover as much space as possible in the beginning. Once I do that, I am going to take a little bit of light blue and I will put up the uh, the colors that I'm using on the screen. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of light blue and I am going to kind of just dab it into onto the uh, the paper. I want some areas that are going to be a little bit darker than others. So this is going to be like the sky, right? So the sky isn't always 100% completely even and blue. So I want to just make it as sporadic as possible. So I'll have some darker areas on top of a couple of darker areas in the middle, just play around with it, leave a lot of white space in it and the white space will simulate clouds. Um, we're doing it really quick and really easy. Next, I'm going to take a size four round brush and um, I am going to just sprinkle some plain water onto the paper. And what this is going to do is um, separate a little bit of the blue space and it's gonna show up like, um, if you've ever used that salt technique where it kind of separates the paint on your paper, doing this will give you a more subtle look. So um, we're going to just add a couple of droplets of water and let it completely dry. And that's going to show, show, show <laughs> so, sorry, sort of like a blurry kind of snowy background. So it's gonna have a very subtle texture to the sky. Now I'm moving on to a size eight round brush. And again, this is a Princeton Heritage. And the only color I'm going to be using from here on out is a Payne's Gray. This Payne's Gray is by M. Graham. And this is where you have to be bold. You're gonna have to be bold for this. We're gonna just draw one huge stroke right down the side of your paper, okay? Um, take a risk, be bold with your, with your marks, and just go for it, all right? We're just going to um, draw the trunk of the tree. And this is going to be uh, the tree from a higher angle. So we're not drawing like the bottom of the tree. This is going to be the a higher angle for the trees and we're gonna see um, sort of like the, the branches and stuff peeking out from the bottom of the page as well. So now I'm going to add some texture to the trunk by putting in some darker spaces with the same color. I'm not changing colors. And then we're going to be adding in some branches. So one of the things that you want to be sure of of is if you're adding thicker branches like the one I just added, make sure that um, when you connect that branch to the trunk, it flares out just a little in sort of like um, like a, a V shape, right, from the trunk. Because the base of that branch, of that thicker branch, has to be able, or the, the, the trunk of the tree has to be able to support that branch. So you can't have a really thick branch with a tiny little connection to the trunk of the tree. So what we're going to do is use the very, very tip of your brush, right? The very tip will give you the finest line. If you are unable to use the very tip of your brush for whatever reason, just go down a brush size and it'll be a lot easier for you. So all we're doing is we are just drawing little branches off of the main branches, little squiggles, we're gonna call them little squiggles. Um, move your brush around. If you have shaky hands, they're gonna come in handy in this little piece right here because we don't want the lines to be 100% straight. When you're looking at a branch, the branch has a lot of like knots and um, there may be some breakage and they're not straight, they're a little crooked. Um, so make sure that you're adding in a lot. You can add in as many or as few branches as you want. I started off kind of bare, bare bones, but as I take a look at my piece, um, I decide to 
add some more branches. If you've been with me for a while, if you've been like following me here or, or over on Instagram, you'll know that one of the pieces of advice that I love to give the most is to change your perspective. So after you have um, put in some branches, right, let's say you're done with the right side of your paper, change your perspective. So stand up and look at your piece from another angle, or um, if you are unable to stand up and look at it from another angle, pick up your paper, pick up your watercolor paper and look at it from a different angle. Anytime you look at your art from a different angle, you'll get a different perspective on it. And you'll see if there's anything that's missing, if something just doesn't seem right, if something seems a little off. And I do that several times during this piece. And that's why you see me go back and start adding a few more details, adding a few more branches, covering up some of that empty space. So always change your perspective, especially during the stages when you're actively painting. Sometimes you might feel that it'll take you out of that creative space, but I guarantee you it will help with your overall um, presentation of your artwork at the end. I promise you it will help. All right, back to the branches. Keep making as many branches as you want. Don't forget to add small little branches and little sticks off of the, the ones that are coming off of the trunk. So keep adding to them. Also, don't forget to add little ones to the actual base of the trunk or to the trunk. Um, you don't want just these really huge branches sticking out of them. You want to add a couple um, coming off, one, a couple of tiny ones, you know, just make it a little, a, a little realistic. This is not 100% realistic, but we're making it a tiny bit realistic. And then I'm going to add a few along the bottom. Once you're satisfied with your trees and your branches, allow the piece to completely dry before moving on to the next step. Okay, next, you are going to grab whatever white medium you have handy. I use Copic Opaque White. This is the white that I use in nearly all of my pieces. Well, every piece that has white, this is what I use. You can use white gouache, white watercolor, some watered down white acrylic. Any white medium you have will do just fine. It does not have to be this. It can also be uh, the Dr. P.H. Martins, which is similar to this. Um, use any white medium. And what we're going to do is load up our brush with some white. Uh, before you load up your brush, make sure that you dry that brush off as much as you can. You want to, and you'll see here just me drying it off, you want to um, sort of have like a dry, dry brush feel to this. So you want to like scratch at your painting. And then we're going to blend this in later, but this is just a foundation of it. So we're going to add some of that white into the trunk to show some snow coverage on it. And 
you don't have to be precise with this, right? Just just lay it on there. <laughs> well, if, if you don't like the way it looks, I'll show you some, some tricks to uh, clean that up. And then we are going to load the tip of our brush. Remember, if you are unable, I'm still using the size 8. So if you are unable to use the tip of your brush or your brush doesn't have that fine of a tip, um, then go down a size. So I am loading the very tip of my brush and I am plopping some white on the tops of every single branch, the very tops of the branches. Okay, we're not doing the underside because when snow falls on branches, they don't go under the branch, they stay on top of the branch. One tip uh, when you're adding snow is um, allow the white to go over not just the panes gray of the branch, but also the sky, because we want it to look as if the snow is sitting on top of the branch, not just, it just doesn't have like a fine covering it, of a fine covering on the branch. We want it sitting on top of the branch. Make sure you get in between all of the branches, so all of the Vs that you see, so where branches um, poke out from each other, how do I say that? Not poke out. <laughs> Where branches branch off from each other. Um, there's that little V. Make sure you fill those with snow as well. You see that I added a bit more to the trunk of the tree. And I added that in because I'm going to blend some of that in later. I just wanted it to dry first. So take your time doing this part. This is, this is the fun part. I enjoy this part. And I'm just going to add the snow to the tops of every branches. And you'll see this close up here, the snow is not falling even on those branches. There's a lot of wiggling going on. I have, again, for all of my shaky hands people who are, who are just like me, this comes in handy at this time. We don't want an even layer of snow on the branches uh, because nature isn't like that. <laughs> when it falls, it just falls and it just kind of sits there. Um, so you want to go and take your time. Enjoy this, this time here, this nice quiet time and add snow to all of your branches. So I'm going to take a really quick break from adding snow to my branches and I'm going to do a little blending of this white that I put on the trunk of the tree. So I'm going in with a dry brush. You saw that I uh, took as much water off of the brush as possible and I'm going in back into my Payne's Gray and you're going to see the dry brush strokes of this. So by dry brush strokes, I mean that the brush is kind of just skipping over the paper because it's not gliding. It's not wet. The brush is not very wet. So that's going to give you some shadows into your tree. You want to make some areas much darker than others. You'll see along the bottom, there are really dark areas. And um, just keep making sure that if you go in to refill or wash your brush off because you've picked up some white, that you thoroughly dry that brush on a paper towel so that when you add in the black again to blend in, you will uh, have the, the, the dry brush strokes on there. And now we're going back to adding more snow on the leaves.
And I like to just go back and forth and back and forth between adding a little bit of the Payne's Gray, adding a little bit of the white, just kind of to give it a more a natural feel to it. And you can stop at any point. Just make sure that uh, all of your branches are covered in snow and allow this piece to fully dry before we move on to the next piece or to the next stage, not the next piece, the next stage. All right, here comes the fun part. Our piece is fully dry. Now I'm going to dip my brush in water. This is a size eight, and I am going to totally saturate, with, saturate it with water, dip it into my white, and add some splatter of white. So since I'm using my bigger brush, the size eight, the splatter is going to be um, a lot bigger than normal and this is this is the look we're going for because we want it to show that it's actively snowing and we want those really big fluffy snowflakes falling down so after i have the very big one the very big flakes i'm going to switch to my size 4 brush and do the same thing so that we can get a finer spray if you want an even finer splatter of paint um, use a toothbrush um, and that'll give you a really nice soft spray of white all over your piece um, and it'll just look like there is falling snow everywhere. And that's it. There you have it. Your beautiful snow covered trees. You can use these, you know, in the background of your pieces, in the foreground of your pieces. But it's a really quick and simple and easy way to make snow covered trees. And there you have it, a super quick and easy way to make snow covered trees. Remember, it does not have to be perfect, it just has to be done. And when you add all of the final details at the end, it all comes together just beautifully, as you can see here. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if there is any other tutorial that you would like to see, please be sure to leave it in the comments below and I will add it to my list of future videos to come. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next week.